regarding gram positive organism which has been shown what is this pattern called as doctor chinese letter pattern which is classical of diphtheria is what need to be remembered so what is a true statement about uh, um, diphtheria it can cause skin infection as all of you know very well <clears throat> now doctor you have been shown a liver biopsy what is shown in this liver biopsy fatty liver fundamentally you are having the globules of the fatty liver fat globules and uh, it is due to the accumulation of the triglycerides into the hepatocytes that lead to development of fatty liver one year old boy has repeated pyogenic infections and uh, his lymph node biopsy has been shown to you so he is basically a case of x linked gamma globulinemia considering the clinical vignette so absence of the germinal centers if you look at uh, a normal lymph node it should show this kind of germinal centers absence of the germinal centers is a classical feature in case of x linked gamma globulinemia is what need to be remembered now a liver biopsy is being shown to you which is classical of cirrhosis of liver so cirrhosis of a liver can be a feature of hemochromatosis cystic fibrosis alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency but not hemosiderosis hemosiderosis is a state of iron overload in iron overload you don't get uh, cirrhosis of liver is what you have to basically remember now doctor a 19 year old with sudden onset of left sided pleuritic chest pain the chest radiograph has been shown to you what do you see a small pneumothorax you are able to see where the bronchovascular markings are not seen typically on the right side you can see here you have bronchovascular marking but here in the costodiaphragmatic area you don't have a small pneumothorax so what do you want to do any pneumothorax which is occupying more than 10% of the lung volume you can't send the patient uh simply like that you need to aspirate the air is what you have to basically remember a 70 year old is presenting with dyspnea and he has suffered from mi complicated by ventricular arrhythmias now uh, what do you see here here what you are seeing is uh, pulmonary fibrosis which is classically caused by amiodarone it is amiodarone induced lung disease is what you need to basically remember <clears throat> a 29 year old from jammu is referred to the respiratory clinic with a shortness of breath and uh, he reports wheeze and chronic cough and he has been managed like a case of asthma there are scattered wheezes and coarse crackles on auscultation and the chest x ray has been shown to you and uh, the pulmonary function tests are showing fev even of 42% of predicted value so what is the typical management of this uh, given scenario fundamentally what he is having is a lower low bar predominantly lower low bar emphysematous changes that he is having and uh, the underlying cause is alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency so inhale corticosteroids with a long acting beta agonist like a salmeterol instead of salbutamol salmeterol is a long acting you use it for two scenarios what are they exercise induced asthma nocturnal asthma entire night raat bahut lambi hai so to take care of that you require a long acting beta 2 agonist uh, anushay is saying why can't that be plural effusion sir which one is plural effusion because it is not plural effusion which one earlier question or which one ha oh female x ray is being given eh? okay because the brush shadow 
all right uh, no it's all it's fine That, that's not the issue oh acha acha because of that you thought it as plural efficient question number 5 uh, oh 50 51 she is saying 51 this is uh, 52 right then let's go back to 51 51 why did you think of for plural efficient cost diagrammatic recesses are uh, uh, visible only no there there is no blunting of cost diagrammatic recess for you to think it as a plural effusion huh eh? so that's a point <clears throat> yeah now doctor um uh, 48 year old with copd with multiple previous presentations with uh, pleuritic chest pain uh, and uh, he is minimally breathless oxygen saturation is 96% and his imaging is being shown what do you see in the imaging pneumothorax once more and what do you see in the lung parenchyma emphysema any pneumothorax occurring in a normal lung is called primary spontaneous pneumothorax a pneumothorax occurring in the backdrop of uh, emphysema is called as secondary pneumothorax so now the question is uh, um what do you want to do in this given case so fundamentally um uh, uh he need to be uh, aspirated and admitted for about 24 hours of observation especially in view of uh, recurrent pneumothorax that he is having in the backdrop of the uh, emphysema sometimes emphysema patients at the time of discharge of home suddenly they become breathless generally they come for acute exacerbations of copd if any patient of emphysema suddenly become breathless always what is the underlying cause rupture of the emphysematous bullae lead to development of a pneumothorax that is the reason patient will go into acute shortness of breath this what need to be remembered a 24 year old with a rash with bilateral knee and ankle pains so typically a palpable purpura in adult hanox collins purpura so what is the histopathology of it doctor fibrinoid necrosis and neutrophils in the dermal capillary wall is what you have to fundamentally remember a 23 year old his ecg and 2d echo has been shown to you so what do you see in this ecg lead 1 lead 3 you, you see there is a left axis deviation lead 1 is pointing up and lead 3 there are negative waves but that is that is not very classical but v5 v6 and v3 v4 qrs complex is very very tall whenever septal waves septal leads and left leads are showing predominant qrs complexes very prominent qrs complexes and how is the qrs it looks like a dagger dagger they are called dagger waves and 2d echo is showing hypertrophied interventricular septum and between left atrium left ventricle what do you have the uh, anterior leaflet of mitral valve and uh, it is trying to come close towards the ivs because it's a hypertrophied interventricular septum so it is a case of uh, hocm so whenever hocm is there what lead to development of uh, sudden cardiac death mitral regurgitation is a predisposing factor for the development of uh, sudden cardiac death is what need to be remembered a 40 year old returned from kumbh mela with a mild bloody diarrhea and he had lost 2 and 1/2 kg abdominal cramps are there what do you see this is a normal knee the other knee is showing unilateral knee joint swelling so Uh, what is the most likely diagnosis anybody who had a git illness followed by knee joint swelling 
is a case of reactive arthritis and often the preceding GIT event is due to Campylobacter infection is what you have to basically remember. 56th question, eh, doctor, one minute. Which question number we are in? Okay, earlier question, all right. Ah, tell me, doctor. Can you explain why MR should lead to sudden cardiac death? Can you give me the board, please? Always in a HOCM, what is the main problem in HOCM? You have a hypertrophied in interventricular septum, you have got a mitral leaflet and you are having the aortic outflow tract, left ventricle outflow tract. If there is any, at the time of ventricle system, if there is any MR, then the size of the ventricle become significantly smaller. Whenever the ventricle size become too small, then uh, the mitral valve and ventric interventricular septum touching become more. And whenever it become more, then uh, the obstruction become more. And when the obstruction is suddenly severely uh, more, that is one predisposing factor. And when MR is there, MR will lead to development of um, uh, uh, dilatation of the chamber. Whenever dilatation of the chamber is there, arrhythmias are more common. And even presence of arrhythmias is also a predisposing factor for In a case of HOCM, whenever MR develops, a case of HOCM who develops MR, actually the obstruction which is there in the left ventricle outflow tract will rise the pressure in the ventricle and this flail mitral valve leaflet which moved towards the anteriorly predisposes to the uh, development of uh, uh, MR. And, uh, if that MR also is there, it is one of the predisposing factor for the development of sudden cardiac death. No, no, the most common cause of sudden cardiac death any point of time is arrhythmias. So, what predisposes to arrhythmias is a chamber enlargement. What predisposes to chamber enlargement is a regurgitant lesion. So, that is how they are all interrelated to each other. Where are the arrhythmias given? If arrhythmias are given, that is the most common cause. Of. What is the cause of death in MBP patients? There are two subset of valvular heart disorders where they go into sudden cardiac death. One group is HOCM, second is MBP. Why MBP people are also predisposed? Because even they are also at a risk of developing MR along with arrhythmias. The moment arrhythmia supervene due to chamber enlargement and that predisposes to the development of sudden cardiac death. Why not? Option A, systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve leaflet is a normal phenomenon in every HOCM patient. That is causing actually the movement of the mitral valve towards interventricular septum and leading to development of uh, if you see the 2D echo, always the posterior chambers are what, doctor? Left atrium and ventricle are posterior chambers. Right ventricle and right atrium are basically anterior chambers, more underneath the sternum. So, here you have the mitral valve leaflet. Between what and what? Between left atrium and left ventricle. This mitral valve leaflet, if it moves up, that means anteriorly. That is called systolic anterior motion of mitral valve leaflet towards interventricular septum. That is a point you need to basically appreciate. Now, doctor, a 40 year old is over, is he, he uh, Campylobacter. Then, 32 year old returns from abroad, he presents with uh, complaints of 
pain in urination. He has got urethral discharge and also arthralgia. And what do you find? Conjunctivitis. So, conjunctival reaction, uveitis. They are the two ocular involvements in reactive arthritis. He can't see due to conjunctivitis and uveitis. He can't pee because of urethritis. He can't climb because of arthritis. Is a classical case of um, reactive arthritis. Whenever the Reiter's syndrome and reactive arthritis develop, they are at the risk of myocarditis, which can be one of the important cause of mortality, is what you have to basically remember. 68 year old with arrhythmias has been admitted and subjected to DC cardioversion. What type of arrhythmia is she having? Atrial fibrillation. So now, after coming to sinus rhythm, what drug we use to maintain the sinus rhythm of atrial fibrillation? Imidron. Imidron is the drug that we basically use, is what need to be remembered. Why not? Because we don't use it. There is no why not about it. Imidron is most preferable. It is also called pill in the pocket. You will tell patient to carry an amidron and any scenario where uh, there is a recurrence of fibrillation. In fact, they can take uh, at that point of time also. Pill in the pocket is uh, amidron. Now, a 56 year old presented, you are seeing the ECG and he, she is hypotensive. So, 2, 3 AVF you are finding ST segment elevation. That is the reason what type of impaction this is doctor? Inferior wall MI is what need to be remembered. Give me the board. So, fundamentally inferior wall MI is because of right coronary artery involvement. It typically lead to, it is also the one which supplies the right side of the heart. There is a reason right ventricle also will suffer infarction. Now, what is the difference between right ventricular infarction management versus left ventricular failure uh, management in a case of acute MI? If the right ventricle get infarcted, then what you need to do is you need to do fluid overloading to the patient. Why? You are administering the fluid into where? Into veins. All the veins carry the fluid through the SVC, IVC and carry it towards which side of the heart? Right side of the heart. When more fluid comes and preload to the right ventricle increases, Starling law is what? Any increase in preload will increase the contractility and make the right ventricle to wake up and this strongly contract and that helps a failing right ventricle. Why you cannot do that in case of left ventricular failure? Because whatever the fluid you are giving will come from right atrium into right ventricle. From right ventricle it will go into pulmonary artery. From pulmonary artery it will go to the pulmonary capillaries. Pulmonary capillaries. But a patient who has got a left ventricular failure, his main problem is left ventricle failed as a pump. That lead to traffic jam in left atrium. That causes an increased pulmonary capillary pressure. Already pulmonary capillary pressure is high. On the top of it, you are running fluid which enters from right atrium to right ventricle to pulmonary artery and come to pulmonary capillaries. It will further cause a rise in pressure. And together will predispose to pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema. That is the reason. What is the treatment? If the patient is having LV failure, doctor, you need to give them diuretics. What dosage you have to give? Not 40 milligrams and pray God. 120 milligram, 160 milligram, you have to give crucified. And then only you can be able to decongest all that pulmonary edema. By mistake you, to a LV failure patient, if you give fluids, that is dangerous. 
by mistake for a right ventricular failure patient if you happen to give diuretics that is also dangerous that is what you need to remember as a house surgeon minimum courtesy is to recognize in a mi patient lv failure or rv failure how will you recognize carry the stethoscope look at the lungs if you find the rolls in the lung then there is pulmonary edema if you look at the jvp if jvp is elevated means right ventricle fail that's how you will identify now doctor 45 year old with long history of alcohol abuse comes with deteriorating confusion he is drowsy has a temperature of 39 degrees and there is a ascite is small amount there is a left sided hemiparesis and his imaging is being shown to you so what is the possibility in this given case so fundamentally he is having a confusion background of alcohol abuse alcohol abuse is predisposing factor for aspiration so whenever aspiration is there then that lead to development of lung abscess or an abscess in the lung and uh, that in turn get circulated to the brain and that lead to development of lung abscess these are number 1 number 2 alcohol itself lead to an immunocompromised state So the predisposing factor for the development of the brain abscess is what you need to basically identify. 56 year old, five year history of increased sweats and change in shoe size. And uh, what do you find here, doctor? Macroglossia. That's the reason it is a case of acromegaly. And you will identify that by doing oral glucose tolerance test. The glucose intolerance is one of the features of the uh, when will you do igf1 concentration there is an entity called lackey lerons dwarfism so what is the meaning of lackey leron dwarfism give me the board in them the growth hormone is produced but it does not act on the receptors growth hormone receptors which is then called lackey lerons dwarfism so in those individuals it is the ig of 1 checking the levels of it is a way to recognize the presence of the growth hormone receptor level resistance is what i want to underscore to all of you now doctor 55 year old with monoclonal para protein then serum protein electrophoresis is showing that then ESR is elevated, myalgia is there, calvarial defects are there, classically. Bone marrow shows plasma infiltration more than 41%, that is more than 30%. What else is required for you to make a diagnosis of multiple myeloma is what need to be remembered. So, to call it as multiple myeloma, why can't you call it as asymptomatic multiple myeloma you look for the roti what is roti myeloma related organ and tissue impairment because the myeloma is causing plasma cell expansion in the bone marrow the bone marrow is unable to produce rbcs that is the reason there is anemia so there is anemia hypercalcemia bone lesions plasma cell infiltrate in the bone marrow above 30% that is the marker of roti without the roti if only electrophoresis is showing a high amount of immunoglobulin then that is called asymptomatic multiple myeloma a lot of people if you check them they may find serum protein electrophoresis showing elevation of igm they may not have anemia they may not have high esr their bone marrow may not show high plasma cells more than 30% they may not have hypercalcemia if the roti is not there only electrophoresis is showing high immunoglobulin then you call it as a symptomatic multiple myeloma is what you need to basically remember
A 60 year old comes with acute chest pain, ECG is shown and the blood glucose is 240. What is ECG showing? Tome stoning of ST segment in V2 and V3 and also V4. Antrimal MI, antraceptal MI in fact. So, how do you want to manage a glucose intolerance at the time of an acute event like a stroke or at the time of MI? You need to basically come and say intravenous insulin, otherwise patients will end up into either DKA or into hyperglycemic non-osmolar, I mean hyperosmolar coma, non-ketotic hyperosmolar coma, anything they can land in is what you need to basically remember. A 45 year old woman from Bangalore comes with 3 months history of sweats and weight gain. Her sweats are becoming worse in the morning. She has a BMI of 30. Her CECT abdomen is shown in the figure. What do you see? Suprarenally, in the pancreas, you are finding a mass in the tail of the pancreas. So, which is classical of insulinoma, especially whenever a person presents with recurrent hypoglycemic symptoms relieved by giving sugar. And uh, um, triad of insulinoma, clinical features, hypoglycemia, which is documented, along with hypoglycemic symptoms, which are relieved by giving uh, glucose is what need to be remembered. 43 year old school teacher from Mumbai, increasing breathlessness, what is classical in her radiogram? Bilateral hilar lymph nodes like potato lymph nodes, potato nodes, classical of sarcoidosis is what need to be remembered. Now, a 54 year old with uh, multiple medical problems comes. She is receiving amidaron, omeprazole, amlodipine, ramipril, atorvastatin, and PFT is showing restrictive defect, defect. And what is lung showing? Lung is showing pulmonary fibrosis. So, classically, amidaron. Induced lung disease is what you have to basically remember. 92 year old. So on Tuesday, you are having a momentous session of uh, DNB surgery. 555 questions. There are 24 topics in DNB from there 50 percent questions are asked. You have to master those 24 topics. Can you guess which topic? Highest number of questions in DNB CET surgery has been asked in the last 15 years. Breast carcinoma. Breast carcinoma. You won't imagine salivary gland tumors are that important. But that is the fourth most important topic both in All India Question Bank and DNB Question Bank. Dr. Gautam will uh, honor the session on uh, Tuesday morning 9 a.m. sharp we will start the class 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. we will finish almost uh, 350 out of those 550 questions and about 40 to 45 topics and uh, on Wednesday I will take the remaining questions morning 9 to 2 before lunch we will finish the remaining questions and you will get a 250 pages of notes of the 600 and uh, uh, 200 pages of notes of the six, uh, 550 questions. So, please take this opportunity to come down on uh, Tuesday morning. Eh? So, <clears throat> now doctor, I think uh, our previous DNB medicine discussion is already uploaded into the online video library. You can review that and those who did not pick up the um, key of the all questions please pick up they prepared the printout of that. Eh? Now a previously well 92 year old patient comes with hypertension, right side hemiplegia, dysphasia and an urgent CT. What do you see doctor on a plain CT here? There is a complete infarct. What type of infarct? Ischemic or hemorrhagic? Ischemic infarct. So, up to how many hours after the onset you can give alteplase 
is a very important question. Up to four and a half hours, you can be able to give um, from the onset of symptoms is what need to be remembered. 57 year old with shortness of breath, Raynaud's phenomena, taking amlodipine and uh, the radiograph of the hand and uh, skin is shown. What is this skin appearance called? Salt and pepper like appearance. And what do you see on the radiograph? Calcification of the bones. So what is Vactor. Uh, Raynaud's phenomena, esophageal dysmodality, sclerodactyly, and uh, uh, etc. etc. So, it is a case of systemic stenosis. Anti SCL 70 antibodies will be um, um, will be typically positive. Crest syndrome. Ha, not vector, sorry, crest. C for calcinosis, R for Raynaud's, E for esophageal dysmotility, S is sclerodactyly and T is telangiectasia is what need to be remembered. Right. Now, uh, uh, 40 year old with history of Raynaud's phenomena, dyspepsia, arthralgia, ESR is 40, antinuclear antibodies are positive. And uh, what is the most likely possibility? So, what you are seeing once more is a case of systemic stenosis where completely the skin is uh, uh, tightened, shiny uh, in nature, and uh, it leads to uh, crest, esophageal dysmotility. And that sclerodermatous changes involve small intestine also. Because of that the motility get affected and there is a malabsorption which occur in case of the system is stenosis is what need to be remembered. 33 year old with the lesions which are being shown on the skin. How are these lesions looking like doctor? They are basically looking like target shaped lesions which are called as erythema multiforme. Erythema multiforme is a side effect of sulfur salazine is what you need to basically remember. Then 65 year old with the history of smoking with hemoptysis weight loss and what do you see? A cavitating lung lesion which is hilar in its location. Square muscle carcinoma is what need to be remembered. 42 year old with a blood pressure of 90 by 60. And the physical findings showed in the figure. What do you see? To the nails there is candidiasis. And there is a hyperpigmentation of the knuckles. Of course, lot of us may have knuckle hyperpigmentation, especially if you are very fair skinned. You can appreciate it much faster. So, what the antibodies are typically found? So, typically uh, Edison with a glucocorticoid deficiency. Whenever glucocorticoid deficiency, Edison, hyperpigmentation, in them anti-21 hydroxylase antibodies are found. What is Edison? Edison is a hypoadrenalism which is autoimmune in nature. You call it as Edison. 54 year old with polysymptomatology, the examination findings have been presented. What do you see? There is a wasting of the muscles, hollowing of the uh, muscles on the dorsum of the hand. Along with that, there are uh, there is also wasting of the tongue. So, such a diffuse wasting is what? Bulbar paralysis along with lower motor neuron type of paralysis, atrophy. So, the question is, atrophy can be a feature of cervical spondylosis, motor neuron disease, spinomuscular atrophy, but not multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis involves spinal cord, but not androconsils. It involves, it leads to demyelination of the corticospinal tract, which is the upper motor neuron. 
it involves cerebellum it involves the brain uh, it involves the corticospinal tract but not the androphon cells that's the reason wasting is never a feature of multiple sclerosis but it is possible in any of the other three things is what need to be basically remembered now doctor there is a small intestine 42 year old presenting with malabsorption malabsorption means in pg medical entrance only one condition that comes to your mind is celiac spur okay so what is the histopathology of celiac spur you have got atrophy of the villi and lymphocytic infiltration into the stroma classically and tissue transglutaminase is the one which generates the antigenic epitopes against the gliadin in the food is what need to be remembered 81 year old comes with seizure and uh, she had uh, increasingly confused unstable uh, unsteady and unable to look after herself over the last 2 to 3 weeks forgetfulness is there no history of trauma and what do you see a lenticular shaped right um, lesion which is chronic subdural hematoma biconvex lesion is epidural hematoma which is arterial and finding the bleed along the sylvian fissure is a feature of subarachnoid hemorrhage anyway you know how to recognize cutaminal bleed or intracerebral hemorrhage come on doctor you are all now ready to take md general medicine any moment entrance is over eh? so that should be the spirit doctor 29 year old with diarrhea which is progressively worsening over the past 6 months then multiple stool samples are negative and a CECT abdomen has been done and there are also hypoglycemic uh, uh, history in the father and on the CECT what you are finding in the tail of the pancreas there is a mass lesion so which pancreatic tumor also lead to a significant history of diarrhea what is that entity uh, uh, what what is that uh, entity called as vipoma vipoma and what is vada syndrome watery diarrhea with hypokalemia and eclerohydria in case of vipoma vada syndrome please don't forget favorite question of the examiner zollinger ellison syndrome is one of the top 24 topics in dnbcet okay so we are going to review all the 550 questions of dnbcet please do come and uh, uh, one more thing we are actually doing uh, a very uh, helpful uh, activity for your preparation can you give me the board see doctor any entrance you go for example if you take the students of Andhra Pradesh you will take one APPG DNB CET AIMS PGI Jipma. If it is any other state, additionally AIPG. Now, whenever you are approaching an exam, let us say DMBCET. Right? Every subject, major subjects, you will have around 25 topics, from which 50% of questions come, another 40 topics, from there another 35% questions come. 65 topics will be there medicine surgery gynops in uh, all the remaining uh, after medicine surgery gynops are over how many are there 15 more subjects 5 are small 10 are medium sized 
so medium size you have 30 topics and uh, small size you have some 15 topics to study so 13 to 10 300 5 into 15 75 plus 3 into 60 180 300 plus 180 480 plus 75 550 topics around 500 topics are there for example out of this 500 one of the main challenge when you go for entrance exam in a short period of time is already you will be good in some topics even when you attend the class also the moment we start the topic which you are already naturally good with you feel oh when this fellow will finish the topic uh, I really I already know a lot about this let him start acidosis alkalosis topic because that is one something that I really want to know exactly what they asked the questions and I really do not want to sit and uh, read I want to listen right. So the time is a limited resource for everyone. So you want to know for example if we take uh, last day the other day we discussed medicine in medicine what did we say? around some 30 topics uh, around 28 topics 50 percent questions came another 65 topics remaining 35 percent came so suppose if we create a test online test with these questions of the last 15 years of dnb classified and given to you straight away you take a test without preparation and get your uh, report in that report it will tell each topic how many questions came in the last 15 years of dnb and what is your performance in that then you will know what topics you are naturally weak where you need improvement for the dnb exam and what topics you are uh, really strong you really do not need to worry about it because you are getting better scores if you can get that report beforehand then uh, you can confidently portion your time in order to focus to, for improvement in those topics among the questions asked in previously in the dnb you got my point same thing we can do for AIMS, same thing for PGI, same thing for JIPMER, same thing for All India and the state MD entrance. So that is what we are now doing. It will take little time before we come up with uh, topic wise uh, uh, labeling of each question asked in the last 15 years and give it like a test for you. Straight same questions of the previous exam and you take it in an exam and the system will give you your relative good and bad areas of performance and accordingly you can plan a buffet of preparation of yourself so that is the whole idea um, we will we will see it and please give your feedback on uh, uh, how it is going to help you so on monday we will host the dnb medicine of course medicine already you attended you have listened uh, the discussion maybe you may get uh, every area very good marks and think that you are too good in medicine yeah in fact you should be good in medicine after attending the session but surgery and other subjects what we will try to do is before you come for a discussion only we will try to host it in the online test engine eh? so that's the plan you are able to get my point eh? what i want what i am going to give you now a 39 year old from noida comes with pain and tenderness in the anterior neck agitation palpitation and uh, fine tremor is there, TSH is low and radioisotope scan, what is it showing? Decreased uptake. So classically, uh, classically uh, this is an example of subacute thyroiditis. So typically in which thyroiditis there is an increased uh, radioactive iodine uptake focally, diffusely and decreased uptake all that approach to thyroiditis we discussed it already in the online video library please review that hmm? now doctor a 20 year old right hand dominant cricketer from hyderabad 
Hyderabad produced uh, some of the finest cricketers. He is noticed to have clutching his right shoulder and a great deal of pain. He is not letting anyone move his right arm from his current position of abduction and axial rotation. And what do you see classically? There is a defect along the postural lateral aspect. What is that called? Bankers lesion is what needs to be remembered. So, what is the management of it? Non-operative immobilization in external rotation, not internal rotation is considered to be the part of the treatment is what needs to be remembered. A routine CBP has been performed. CBP has been performed on a 22 year old medical student who had a altered leukocyte count. And you are able to see the eye which is showing exudation. And there is a history of this happening every spring and summer. Typically pollen energy leading to hay fever. And who is the main mediator of hay fever doctor? Isnophils is the point you need to appreciate. Now what are the ocular conditions shown to you? The only ocular condition in the retina that you know is at most retinoblastoma. Do you know melanoma also? Too much no? So um, they usually present with uh, leukocoria is what need to be remembered. A 37 year old with dyspnea, right pleuritic chest pain, works as a plumber, chest x-ray is being shown and a chest, uh, uh, what, is, what is present here? He has got a pneumothorax and uh, uh, he previously also had right pneumothorax 8 months ago. That means he is having recurrent pneumothoraces. So what is the way that you can be able to uh, help him? Video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. What are the indications? If there is a second ipsilateral pneumothorax after a previous episode or a bilateral spontaneous pneumothorax or a spontaneous chemothorax or a persistent air leak in all these individuals you need to do video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. A 50 year old lady she had been on demand treatment. Vijay says question number 150 is a false statement. Eh? What was 150? One minute. Let me go back to 150. Huh? It is not an image based question. Okay, okay. We will come. We will come to that. Or we may not come to that because today, uh, Sunday afternoon, our mind is tuned for a 3 hours discussion. Saturday evening also actually it is tuned because this time we will have subject as discussion. But uh, today I need to attend a party in the evening. So, uh, we will discuss another half an hour and then take a call. So, 50 year old from Calicut with severe rheumatoid arthritis with uh, DMARD had been on infliximab and uh, the problem resolved. Then he has got a pleuritic chest pain and development of a left sided pleural effusion as you can see in this radiograph. So what is our deal? If TB is in options, TB is the answer. So infliximab immunocompromises the person and predisposes to development of TB is what need to be remembered. 